Hey everybody, it's the Drive School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman and uh, my, my buddy, uh, my brother in Christ, Pastor Chris Brademeyer is back. How you doing? You know, I'm doing, I'm going to say I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Life is, okay. life is okay. And uh, the weather's been weird. We've had more rain this winter than I think we've had in North Dakota ever. Like if we took all the winter rains and added them up um, through the history of the state, since we've been keeping detailed meteorological records, we've had more this year than all of that combined. It's been a very strange winter. Huh, fair enough. Yeah, uh, we've gotten snow, and I'm, I've been appreciative, but uh, that's that. So um, the Drive to School podcast, the, the the premise of this podcast is at least uh, you can listen to this with your parents in the car on the way to school. You can watch it after school and, and actually talk to your parents about it. Um, hopefully, you yourself might not have a lot, a lot of uh, familiarity with it, but a lot of what gets done in your church or sometimes is, is sometimes dictated by Lutheran internet. And even if it's not... Um, God be praised. Uh, it's it's hard not to notice what's being done by influencers online, um, especially when it's when it's wrong. Um, so so, Pastor, help me think through sort of how do I go about dealing with people being wrong on the internet? <laughs> well, you know, as as one of two people in this conversation who has like zero influencer cred. Um, that makes me totally an expert, right? <laughs> I think you're overlooking or giving a lot of credit where it doesn't. I think two of two people have no influencer cred here. Um, <laughs> let's well, let's let's do this though as theologians. All right. Well, you know, here, here's the thing. I, I think we need to remember that the internet is a public ground. You know, it's it's the town square of the modern age. It's where people have mm-hmm. in conversations today, and it's okay to have them. You know, there's. There's a group of people that I've run into who, you know, anytime somebody has a problem with some public event, which, by the way, the the Eighth Commandment, when something happens in public, it's okay to talk about it in public. That's fine. And so uh, people freak out and they say, oh, Eighth Commandment, Eighth Commandment, we can't talk about that unless you personally go visit whoever was preaching or whoever put this event on or whatever. That's 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 too much. Right. You as a Christian, you are allowed to ask questions and comment on things that you see happen that are out in the public eye. So, you know, I would go so far as to say as, you know, things that are said in sermons are public, um, things that churches publish are public, events that districts and synod put on are public, RSOs put on, that's all public. We can talk about that. That's not bad. So, you know, as we go into this, you know, if you want to talk about this stuff, if it's important and you think it's worth talking about, you're not wrong, that's okay. So and and that that line you're drawing because I, I we we can we can make a burden out of this that that's usually set just high enough that we don't have to to follow through with it so we can feel better about it. Um, should you talk to somebody if if they are if they are sinning? Well, well, who? Because like if I if I disagree with the Pope's theology, should he should he take some time out of his day for me? Um, I, I can't necessarily get there if if you know pick a celebrity because I don't know the names of any of them anymore because I'm old. Um, then then fine. Like maybe they they don't. Oh, owe that but but if it's if it's you know my, my brother in christ down the street maybe maybe but i, I think maybe that the way we're framing it um the way you framed it was was super helpful are you asking questions are you trying to learn something or are you trying to to do something else and, and again asking questions is great because you want to make sure you understand actually what's going on so if you're going to disagree with something and you don't take the time to do your homework and it turns out that it's been misrepresented because, you know, that never happens on the Internet where somebody deceptively edits something to make a point. Right. Um, you're going to look like a dumb dumb and nobody wants to be a dumb dumb. You know, we want to actually react to things in truth. We're people of the truth. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's OK to do that. It's also not a bad idea, you know, to follow the example of the Eighth Commandment, um, Matthew 18, excuse me, and just call somebody up and ask about it. Um, in fact, this just what, what spawned this conversation is I saw something on Facebook today from uh, somewhere in my district and I called up the appropriate party and had a conversation with them about it. And I didn't write a big thing up and attack it in public. I wanted to make sure that everybody knew what was going on and we could address it that way first. And if that doesn't fix the problem, it may become necessary that you know me or another pastor in the district would say something in public. But at this point, it looks like the way to solve the problem is just by talking to the guy. And that's what I tried to do. So um, but you're right, though, the bigger picture this stuff gets, the harder it is to sit on and talk to somebody. So, you know, when Pope Francis talks about we can bless same sex couples, but not same sex marriages, which is a very strange thing to say um, when he says that. Well, Lutheran pastors are allowed to publicly disagree with that and point out that it's really an untenable position and it's probably not a good thing for the Christian church to do. And that doesn't mean we have to go call up Pope Francis and you know have an audience with him first. 
because it's out there in the public, we can react to that. But back to, you know, individual people. So you're, you're Joe Schmo parishioner and you see something strange that's going on on the internet. Um, you're, it's okay to say that, you know, I don't, I don't like this. I think this is not maybe the best way to do it. Um, but when you do it, you know, we don't want to be disrespectful, right? We don't want to go out of our way to belittle or attack somebody's character or to put people down or, you know, just a virtue signal that you're like totally based and whatever, um, because that stuff's all ridiculous and none of that matters. What matters is Christ and his truth. And so if we're uh, doing this, I guess the question comes down to why are we doing it? Because if you're doing it to be like, you know, ultra trad and, you know, put all those people in their place. Well, that's about you at that point. That's not about our Lord. If you are doing it because you think that the truth matters and Christ matters and you are doing it in as gentle of a way as you can, then I think you're doing it probably pretty well. But I think it's also worth asking, is this really worth my time? You know, I think it's more important that we spend most of our time looking at our local church, our local circuit, our district, rather than some guy on in Timbuktu. You know, there's stuff that happens in the saltwater districts that we in North Dakota don't do and would not do and we don't like. But do you know how much time I spend looking at the saltwater districts and what they're doing? Mm-hmm. Zero. Why? Because they're like a thousand miles away. What I worry about is my church and my sister churches around me and my brother pastors around me. Those are the people that I spend my time worrying about and thinking with because they're the ones God's put around me to think about stuff with. Right. So you don't have to be internet police for uh, somebody that you have nothing to do with, which is which is good. I think maybe even just sort of, uh, especially for for the kids that are listening, that the families that are listening, there, there's a, a point that Luther makes when he's talking about the Eighth Commandment and the large catechism. And he says, one of the things sinners like to do is when we when we don't see enough justice being done by, by the system put in place, we like to use our words to sort of help that along. And so maybe the government won't punish them for being a criminal, but I'm going to ruin their reputation and make sure that they don't get away with it. Um, if we take it upon ourselves to actually make somebody worse as punishment instead of to let the truth be greater. If, you, if the truth must be protected, okay, cool. But if, if really this is actually about making sure that somebody else is hurt by this, that's a sin. Like that, that, that's the eighth commandment. And, and whether or not you've checked all the boxes of, did I talk to them appropriately first and then make sure they hurt? That's a different thing. Um, but, but also sort of inside of this, it, it sort of frees you then to, to, Ask yourself, because everybody itself righteously will take the the outward expression of piety, but if somebody else made that post and then didn't get all the likes and all the shares and all the credit for it, would you be okay with it? Or is, is this kind of about how you feel about about being the, the, the purity police? Well, you really hit on something important there, right? We One of the things I've been spending some time thinking about is vocation. And, uh, you know, vocations are things God hands us. You know, Mm -hmm. uh, he hands me, I I didn't like go out and decide to have the children that I have. Like the Lord blessed us with children when he decided to bless us with children. And he called me to be at this church as a pastor. And he made me, you know, granted, I did court my wife and she courted me and we ended up getting married. I did have some say in that. But us getting married is ultimately a gift from God. And these things are handed to me. I think we run into trouble when we appoint ourselves to do things God has not given us to do. And I think we need to be careful of that. We also need to be careful of our ego. Um, it's very, very tempting to get that dopamine hit on Facebook by saying something, you know, a lot of people are going to react to. And there's two ways we can get that hit. One is by having everyone agree with us. Another one is by being a troll and having everybody get mad at us. People kind of get energized off of both and neither of them are Christian because the truth is the important thing and Christ is the important thing. And so if I'm going to talk about something that happened and I have put things on Facebook and wherever else um, about things that I've seen that are wrong, right? That are unbiblical or whatever, you can do that, but you don't do it for the sake of hurting your neighbor. You do it for the sake of correction and reproof. So bring them to the truth. You do it out of love and consideration for their soul. And so I think that's kind of the litmus test we have to go through, right? Am I doing this because I want people to notice me? Or am I doing this because it helps my neighbor by witnessing to the truth? Um, And then the other thing too is, I'm sorry, I'm jumping gears here. But um, the other thing too is we we should also remember we don't have to defend Jesus, right? He's God. Mm -hmm. He he doesn't need to be defended. We can witness to the truth. We can, you know, give an explanation, a reason for the faith that is in us, as Peter likes, you know, says, but we don't have to actually defend Jesus. If nobody got on the internet to defend Christ, he would still be <laughs> God. Right? He still would win. He would still be raised from the dead. You don't. You don't have to. And so, if you're going to do it, do it for love and for the sake of the gospel and the truth mm-hmm. of the gospel. 
Uh, don't feel like you have to do something for God that he can't do for himself or pad your ego or anything like that. I like that. So there's really no way of getting around it on the internet because everybody gets a voice. There's going to be a lot of stuff that that's wrong. Um, and sometimes it's going to be because people are just intentionally wrong. Um, and sometimes people who actually normally believe right are just going to mess up um, because sinners. Uh how to, to go about this actually matters because otherwise we just end up screaming at a, at a faceless, nameless person and it, it only stirs animosity when if you got a chance to sort of recognize that the devil works a lot on internet simply by sort of disembodying it, by, by sort of taking away the face-to-face -face reality where um, we, we can actually come to consensus, come to, to, to brotherly agreement, even sometimes just sort of come to brotherly disagreement and say, you and I, on this point, I, I can love you, I can care for you, but I'm not going to agree with you on that. Um, but but actually still do it in a way where you might not get punched in the face. Uh, that That's handy. Um, you're going to find stuff that's wrong on the internet. Is it your job to fix it? Well, if God didn't make it your job to fix it, maybe you should, maybe you should take a breath. Well, that's that's always good advice, right? Take a breath. You don't have to fix everything. If something really gets into your craw and you need to say something about it, it's okay to say, mm -hmm. you know, if you got a Baptist friend and they post something about believer's baptism and how, you know, baptism doesn't do anything for us. It's okay to say, hey, just so you know, this passage disagrees with that and give you your favorite passage on baptism. That's fine. 100%. You're doing it respectfully. Um, you know, if you're coming out the gate swinging and you talk to people, you know, in a way that would get you decked in the face if you were doing it in person, you're mm -hmm. probably doing it wrong, right? You're doing it wrong. And, and an I'll old... admit, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was going to say, I was. I will admit, I've not been perfect at this. I've done social media stupidity. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, when I, uh, oh boy, it's been several years ago, and I put something on our church Facebook page that was not a good thing to put there, and it upset a lot of people, and they were right to be upset. And a brother pastor, um, who's who's a bit of a He's a little grumpy, but uh, he was right to call me out, actually, at the end of the day in this particular situation. And um, my first reaction was to get mad at him. And so I just yelled at him a lot in public, which was inappropriate. And uh, I didn't, you know, call him uh, any profanities or anything, but I wasn't very kind to him. And and uh, after sitting and thinking about it for a while, I realized I had done wrong. And so I actually got a hold of him and apologized to him and uh, asked for his forgiveness and deleted the post. I left all the comments up because I didn't want people to... To, I want people to know that I'm not trying to cover up the fact that I did a stupid thing, but the content mm -hmm. itself was wrong, and I learned from that, and now I'm much more careful about what I put on Facebook. <laughs> There's you know, an old it, distinction um, that, that we've made in the past, but like, are you trying to help or are you trying to win? And just ask yourself right there. Um, because, yeah, if, if, they're, if you're trying to help and there's actually a place for you to help, help. But if you're just trying to win, there's no place for that. No, you don't need to win. Jesus has already won. He's the victor. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we get to delight in that and be in that. And so we don't do theology for the sake of winning because, you know, you can win all the arguments and be right about everything. And so what? Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, kind of a, a super fun topic for the day. But uh, thanks, Pastor, for hanging out with us for it. Hey, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. Have a good one.